Okay, I hope you can hear me and I hope I don't get in too much of the way of this as I'm painting, but I'm starting on the halter here. And in my photograph, this halter is very blown out. So for two reasons, I'm going to scrub in a base layer. First reason is I really like working into a wet layer. And the second reason is I want some depth in there, some variety of color before I get right down to my white paint because that's going to be using up that value way too quickly. Now because I've got all kinds of burnt sienna and other colors around here, I don't need to scrub specifically within the lines. And because I've got a good map of what I was doing, it becomes quite easy to just go ahead and scrub. Now, this color that I'm using here is a kind of a mixture of my magenta, and there's some of the blues in it, and there's some of the burnt sienna. And as I shift over to the cooler side here, I've added a little of that black mixture that I had left over. Now with this painting, I'm going to work on keeping it nice and loose once I get past the main detail of the eyes, a little more detail in the nose, and I'll put a bit of detail in these buckles, but I'm going to still keep it quite simple. So I'm trying to make sure that this doesn't get too persnickety. I'm just going to work with main shapes as much as possible. So the next step, once I've got my shadow areas in here, is to wipe out some of the highlights to create a nice little underpainting. This nice and cool. So the trusty Q-tip again. Let's put another little shadow in here. Step back a little bit so you can see my reference. So I'm just wiping out, emphasizing much more than I see because I know what a halter looks like. And I know that it has little ribs in it. it I don't have to draw all the details, I'm just going to give an indication because some of this can show through. It's just paint. So it's not, even though it's scrubbed on thinly, it's still really stable because it's not thinned down with water or anything. So I'm just refining my little scrub in here. Some of the areas are going to be quite white. And if I wanted to, I could wipe right out with a dampened Q-tip on an area I know is going to be really white, but there's still dried paint underneath, so it may not come off completely. But as I said, I don't want the paint gone completely. So now, mixing up a little bit of a 
blue-gray mixture with some of the magenta in it. I'm going to add just a little bit of white to it. So we get the blue, the magenta, white with a little bit of my black or burnt sienna mixture since I've already got blue in here. Just the burnt sienna would do it. And touching into my linseed oil. Now as I get into this painting, I will more than likely switch to a bit of a stiffer brush. Because these areas are small, I'll have more control with this soft brush. But in order to keep the painting quite loose, I'll be using a stiffer brush later on. As soon as I get out of the areas of greatest detail, I'll pull out my stiffer brush. The idea is just to put as little as I need to put in order to give an idea of what I'm doing. I may have to turn my lights on. It's quite cloudy here tonight and I'm painting a bit into the evening. See what happens if I pop a light on here. Makes it a lot easier to see, that's for sure. Hopefully that doesn't make it too difficult for you. Let's do a few little areas of dark. I'm gonna have to sneak in close here so I don't hope I don't completely block the view. Some of these areas, especially around where the rings are, it's going to need to be an area of great contrast if it's going to read correctly. Now if I was painting this really detailed, I'd be very concerned about getting every little shadow in here correctly. But I'm doing mostly suggestions here, so I don't need to worry too much about little things in these areas because that's not really going to matter in how this thing reads. And I like to paint a little bit around where I'm going to be doing the lighter, the other areas. Just kind of moving around the painting where the, where it's going to outline. So I've got a wet edge to work against. There's my reference. got a bit of a rainstorm brewing. Now it reads really dark in my photograph. I don't need to make it quite as dark because the photo is really blowing out the light here. And one thing I often do is to try to add areas of color wherever I can. And sometimes where the shadow meets the light, you can get away with putting in quite a bit of color. And that's what I'm going to do here. I 
again kind of picking and choosing because there are areas in this shadow where you're seeing seams and, and variations and if it's going to not make a difference to the completed painting I'm not going to bother. I don't need every little detail to show. I'm really trying to emphasize only what I need to paint. So now the next step I'll start with a clean brush and I'll grab some of this magenta. There's a little oil in it already so I don't need to add linseed oil. In fact I might have to use some new paint because it's quite oily. Sometimes when you squeeze out some paint it shoots out a little oil too and that's not a problem but if you don't want it quite that oily just squeeze enough out that you get the heavier paint just a touch of oil in it. So here we go. Let's see how bright we can get this magenta in here and still have it read right. It needs a little bit of red in it to make it really sing. And these little bright areas won't show much, but being as the shadow is really a grayed pink and the lights are quite blown out, the only way you're going to know this is a pink halter is to have little areas of this pink color in here. go ahead and put in the highlights. I'll come back in once I've mixed my colors. Okay, I'm going to start in on the lights in the halter. And I've mixed up a color that is basically my magenta. I've added some white to it to lighten it, but I've also added some of the red to it, the pyro red light, because I don't want it to be too cool. This is a warm looking painting. I'm going to start out by stroking on the paint quite loosely and see how much I can get away with doing that. And because of the nature of these little halters, if the canvas is showing through just a little bit, the nubs in the canvas, that might be a good thing. those things that can be annoying if you want your paint to go on thicker and it's not can actually add to the grain of this. So the idea is to get the basic coloration in and then I will fiddle with it. See how much fiddling I need to do. But at first place in the main values, keeping in mind that if anything slips out of the realm of where I want it to go, it's pretty easy to wipe it off with a Q-tip. One of the challenges working larger is I really like having wet paint that I can go back and forth in. And you can't keep everything wet at the same time when you're painting something this large. It's just too much work to work with. 